All right, so I'm going to do a little work on my Ender 3 here. This is the Ender 3 Pro. Uh, getting a little dirty, dusty. Um, but it's pretty much all stock. The only thing that I had done to this is uh, put those smoothers on there, the diode, uh, blocking diodes, you know. And it actually worked pretty good. Um, for the most part, and the little benchies there, it, they, they, they both came out good, you know, before and after I put the smoothers on, but, um, you know, I couldn't really tell a difference, but there was some other parts that I was making, and, and I could tell that it really improved um, to a minute, you know, detail on it. So that was well worth it, right? Um, I really liked it. But I want to upgrade the board now. And you can see I chose the SKR Mini E3. And right now, so it's just a it should be just a quick uh, quick installation, plug and play, and and then I'll I'll test it again and, and do the uh, compare the little benchies there but uh, but the main reason I'm switching is one this is a 32-bit board and two uh, I'd love to get a good quiet print right I'm sure it'll quiet it down quite a bit and uh, then I'll just have to put up with the fan noise this fans gets kind of noisy but uh, but that's the whole reason then later on I'll probably add on uh, the BL touch but I want to make sure I get this board on there and get it all stable but for the first uh, first time around I'm just gonna swap them out you know and, and see really how how well it does just for a just an easy swap out right so I'll have to turn this over this is the Ender 3 Pro so all the screws are on the bottom there you see that has been flipped over. So let me open it up and I'll show you what's going on. Alright, so there's the cover with the fan on it. And I think I'm going to go ahead and unplug this now. Uh, well, you can see where it's been uh, hot glued on. So I'll go back and make sure all this hot glue is off of everything. And you can see the board and there's my little the smoothers there and they fit in very nicely it was really easy to install um, very cheap but uh, very effective upgrade and but that's where it sits so let me take this off I'm gonna clean off some of this stuff here so I can get that and just go ahead and disconnect it but everything else it should be pretty easy from I've seen some other videos on YouTube also so really it's nothing new I'm just gonna give another uh, show another install and demonstrate the results really because um, all these are it's just really a plug-and-play I'll just take all this stuff off take the board off and everything should uh, plug right in so I just want to show you what I'm what I'm doing here when I'm taking everything off you can see there's a lot of hot glue going around all the connectors here um, and you can see them here on the side too so I'm having to go through and you can see a lot of it there so it's taking me a little longer than I expected, and that's just because of all the hot glue. I'm trying to remove as much as I can without damaging anything. Uh, just beware. Just plan on it. Um, I just got a razor blade and a little, little pair of needle nose there where I can grab onto it. Because a lot of times your little connector there will... Uh, the little casing will come off also uh, that's what happened here on this this fan but it's able just to plug it right back in no problem so 
so just be aware of that all right so I got the board removed there's all the, the cables no problem there's the board you can see all the the hot glue I had to peel off of everything it was kind of pain in the butt and there's my smoother as you can see I used the double-sided tape and they fit in pretty good I mean if you're gonna go that direction just set them on the side like this and they just plug right in they were, they were really easy and I think it was well worth the 10 bucks or whatever I spent on it but I know I'm sure I'm gonna be saving this board um, and all these other components I'm gonna hand build one from scratch and, I'm, and this is what I'll be using for it but in the meantime so you can see the two boards you can compare uh, your SD card USB um, there's the display I mean everything all the power you can see how similar it is so uh, yeah it should be just really simple just to pop it right back in connect everything up but just take your time uh, get rid of all this junk and take your time uh, plugging everything back in and I'll come back when it's ready to print and I almost forgot don't forget to put your heat sinks just tape them on and put them right in place on your steppers there All right, so there's the heat sinks in place. You can see there's just double-sided tape on there. And to me, they seem you can move them around kind of easily. I hope they stay on there. It seems like they'd fall off pretty easy. Plus, plus I really don't know how effective the heat transfer is going to be just going through double-sided tape. Um, unless it's some kind of thermal tape or something but uh, but they're on so we'll see they're gonna be fan cooled anyway so uh, I just question how how well those heat sinks are gonna work with just the layer of tape in between but that's the way it goes so I am almost ready to put these on I think uh, I'm gonna hook up the power first since it's right up here on the edge and uh, it might be hard to get to. Um, yeah, see, look at that. The, uh, the heat sink already just came right off. So, yeah, so I'll be putting that back on. I'm going to hook up the power first and then screw the board in right there. And I'll see if I can. Position that back on. So I'm going to have to be very delicate with the uh, <laughs> when I'm hooking everything up because these things sure seem to pop off pretty easy. Alright, so it went back together pretty nicely, no hiccups. Um, the only thing I noticed that was different, you can see where the uh, the hotbed, the power going to it. If you look here on the plug and you see it labeled negative and positive. So positive on the outside of the connector and negative on the inside. On the old board it's reversed. It's showing positive and negative. So just watch out for that. But everything else just plugged right in. Everything fit really nice. Everything's lining up, so I'm just going to screw it back together and we'll do a test print. Alright, so everything's put together and it's ready to go. And I'm going to, this is the card that came with, uh, with the SKR mini board. I'm just going to go ahead and run it with that. I'm, I'm assuming it's probably firmware and maybe a test print um, well this thing's pretty dusty in it you need to clean it all off but so I'm gonna go ahead and do that um, 
I was debating. I was about to just just put my other card with all my other G code stuff in there and see if it prints just like uh, just like the other one. But let's see what that does. Let me plug this in here. Sorry about all the shakiness here. plugged in. Let's turn it on and see what happens. There's Marlin Bug Fix 2.0. So, Mini E3. It says ready. Kind of flip through and see what the differences is here. Print me about printer configuration advanced preheat. Nozzle and bed, okay. So, SKR Mini E3 uh, version 1.2 test. Let's see what that does. I don't feel anything preheating though. Interesting. Heating failed. Well, that was interesting. So I wasn't feeling any heat, and it just gave me a, a note. Oh, it just started to get hot. It said heater failed. So. wondering before I do this I'm going to run this other one with my other prints because it sure seemed kind of noisy too if you ask me set uh, the preheat up and the bed up see the bed I don't feel any heat at all I'll have to check it out. Something's wrong. Yeah, it's showing zero, zero. 25 degrees, 60 degrees. Alright. Well, interesting. So, I'm going to have to 
dig back into it and and see if I miswired something which would be kind of strange it was actually an easy easy swap but uh, but let's see what happens okay so after a little more research it seems like everything is I mean it's no problem um, I'm not gonna rack it up to a faulty board yet until I try this what I was I was watching online in another uh, installation video Chris Riley I believe uh, pretty good video and this is what I saw that was different see that little jumper here on his the stock placement was over here to the right covering the middle and the right pin uh, this one is on the middle and the left um, so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna put the jumper back over because uh, his seemed to work pretty well I don't know what it does it just says spread on it but that's about the only thing I saw that was different um, just the jumper was in a different space so I'm gonna swap that and uh, and try it again all right so I got the jumper moved over uh, I don't know what it is it's just labeled spread I will research it for sure but I just switched it over to what was shown as his stock placement uh, Chris Riley that is um, on his video so let's power it up and check it out if it powers up fine uh, I'll try a preheat and see if everything's heating up uh, then I need to hook up some filament and uh, we'll do a test print but let's power this up first and see what happens I don't have any card in there yet I'm going to try to preheat PLA see what it does I don't know if you can see that looks like everything's climbing again as far as uh, heat the nozzles heating bed is not really no there it goes again so something is wrong isn't that strange so I'm not going to preheat anything this time it seems like it's um, when it's trying to preheat but there is one thing I do want to try I'm going to put this card back in initialize media print from media let's do this test and see if it's if it gives that weird noise again oh it's quieter Okay, so that jumper definitely helped. But now I just need to find out. Yep. There it goes. What does that see? E1 heating failed. Printer halted. Press reset. okay so the extruder is failing the hot end is failing well I'd say the bed is too because it's just not getting warm so I'm gonna dig back into it and make sure I have everything hooked up correctly alright well I'm running off a test print 
it looks like uh, looks like it's running fine now I took a second look at it after I stepped away and and got it off my mind for a little while but um, I discovered because it was having you know it was saying there was uh, you know the thermals or the hot end problems all that good stuff and uh, and shutting off so I got underneath and looked again and sure enough I had the thermistors reversed I had you know I had to between the bed and the in the hot end so I just reversed them and uh, and bingo it worked fine so the only other problem that was my problem that was my fault the only other problem was that uh, that jumper there that I showed earlier um, I just moved it over and it solved the problem with the uh, with the steppers it's the 2209s it was uh, mine came uh, with that jumper set over, I guess that's you do that when you're when you're using uh, um, sensorless homing. But but when you're using the end stops like this, then uh, I'd move the uh, jumper back over. So so that was it. That was about the only thing to, to watch for, and just make sure you know take your time and and plug everything in. Um, and it seems to be working great so this was the first step I'm gonna do a test print uh, I want to see how this comes out and I want to make sure it's good and stable and then I'll probably be adding a BL touch to it so that'll be the upcoming thing I just have a few things I need to print off first and uh, but that's it so that's my experience with switching over to that SKR um, mini and uh, seems to be working fine so here's a quick comparison this is the very first print and this is the piece before I swapped it out they're just about identical yeah this one has a seam I think this one does too so I'll have to do something about that but overall yeah they're they're just identical if you put them side by side I wouldn't be able to tell the difference um, So, okay, I'd say that's a success. Um, I think it's good to go. All right, well, um, I know I only have a few videos so far, but uh, be sure to subscribe and watch for my next ones. My next ones, I'm going to be putting... Uh, a BL touch on this one and I have a larger project going on over there where I am uh, rebuilding an older uh, Cubex Duo I've gutted it and uh, I've been putting all new parts on it and trying to get that thing running so ah yeah so thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe